only thing that that's been made by a man are the scholars in the hands of Jesus. Right. 
that old Nebuchadnezzar. How many of you know what he was? He was one of the greatest rulers of all time. But he came into the presence of God one day and he found out that he wasn't as great as he thought he was. Amen. I, hey, I hear somebody back there saying amen. You just keep it up, brother. Amen. <laughs> but he went out one day and he made himself a decree. He said, I'm going to have a decree set up and whenever you hear the sound of the music and all of that stuff, I don't know if I'll get through this or not. He said, I want you to fall down on your knees and worship me. Huh? Hey, he didn't say anything about worshiping God. He said, worship me. But he said, you know what? If you don't do it, you know what I'm going to do to you? He said, I'm going to toss you in the fiery furnace. And there was three little Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that answered him and they said, King, whether we be careful to answer you or not, we don't want you to know that if God delivers us, well and good. But if He doesn't, we still are not going to bow down to you today. Church, we need to not bow down to the Lord today. I know that old king, he got all upset. Come on. <laughs> got all upset. <clears throat> he would send his soldiers out. And he got those three little Hebrew boys. He put their robes on them, their clothes on them, and he dressed them all up real fancy. Then he got the strongest men, Eric, that he could get out of his army. <laughs> He said, now, you come up here and you throw those three boys in that fiery furnace. And incidentally, I'm not talking from memory now, but that furnace was uh, heated up seven times more hotter than what it needed to be. Amen. <clears throat> he threw them in. But you know the blast from that furnace was so great that it killed the men that threw them in. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, well, so Lord, I want you to know that old king, he got some trouble in his mind. He was up all night. <laughs> and, you know, he came out there the next morning and he looked in that front. He asked the Southern people there, and then said, did we not cast just three people in that furnace? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that's who they threw it in. But I want you to know something today, church. That old king got the surprise of his life when he looked inside that furnace. Thank the Lord. He said, did we not cast but three in there? He said, why is it that I see a fourth man walking in that furnace and he's not going to Hey, hey, I'm no stranger to the church. That was Jesus in the furnace with the Hebrew Big secret today. <laughs> but I want you to know something today. The world, <clears throat> the world is trying everything that it can today to 
get the church. Come on. Now, you may agree with me on this, you may not. Don't make much difference to me whether you do or don't. I still believe it today. Amen. Amen. They have got a <coughs> television documentary coming up that says that they are going to view the sins of the church. I got some news for people today. The church never sinned. That's right. Bless the Lord, the church has not committed sin, but the people in it today. Amen. Folks, I want you to know that they don't serve God there all the way they should, and they get a lot of trouble going on. Amen. Woo! Well, I tell you what, if I could get my breath this morning, I would. <laughs> I want you to know today that the church is spotless today. Amen. Oh, my, my, my. Jesus is coming after a church. Amen. Bless the Lord there that is without spot, without blemish. Amen. Jesus is coming after that church. Yeah. Bless your heart, there's no sin in that church today. Amen. Now there may be some people in it that has committed sin. There's no doubt about that today, but I want you to know something today. God is taking care of His children today. The times that I've been down here, I heard Daryl sing that song this morning. I need a miracle. I was here a couple of years ago. I said, Daryl, would you sing that song for me? I said, I am in need of a miracle. He said, I sure will. <laughs> Bless your heart. My, my daughter had tried to. to <coughs> drive her car up a tree and it just about killed her. <laughs> but folks, I want you to know something today. <coughs> you know where she's at today? Bless the Lord, she's over in Little Center with the rest of my family in church this morning. Amen. Amen. That's how that God answers today. That's what God does for His children today. Amen. I want you to know today that Daryl, everybody has got some kind of a problem today. Yes. And we've all got a God today that if we just call out to Him, thank the Lord, just ask Him, Lord, I need your help today. And God will provide what we have need of today. Amen. My, my, my. I think about that song every once in a while. Lord, I, I need your help today. I think today that the world needs to realize today that we're a servant of God today that's able to do whatever we need to do. Amen. <laughs> I remember when I looked at the sister right here. Uh, was she the one up in the Cleveland Clinic? The old. Okay, Chris. That was up in Northern Ohio in a hospital. Yes. And you know, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And I told the Lord one day, I said, Lord, I need a miracle brought down from you. And it hadn't been very long ago I saw that young lady up here in the pulpit singing. Yes, she was. Hey.
And when you really need them to look around for them, they got your back all right. Way back down the road. Bless the Lord, I want you to know God is not like that today. When God says, I got your back, preacher,
when I got saved. I was looking for it. Hey, I, I had faith in my heart that God had instilled down there. <clears throat> he said, you look for me. Bless your heart, church. I'm looking for you today. And somebody said, <clears throat> preacher, how long are you going to go? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever God says, it's enough. I don't know if some of you feel like I, I preached a message on the first Sunday of the year on my birthday. I think, I think it was my 75th birthday. And I preached a message of what's the well, I'll tell you what. <coughs> it's not my birthday today. <laughs> but it ain't very far away, Daryl. <laughs> it's not my birthday. But it, I want you to know that whenever the Lord takes this old boy out of this life, <coughs> it's going to be just like a, 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 a new time in my life. We're going to have a new vision in our life. I'm going to be able to see my blessed Savior. And I'm going to come to I thought that I, I don't know how I got from where I was going to go to here. <laughs> but the thought that I had on my mind this morning was the fact that Jesus died on the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I heard a song yesterday. It says, I'm going to heaven. Going to heaven. And I'm on my way now. Bless your heart. I, I'm on my way home today. We, we, we was talking to somebody. I, I'm going to try to shut up here in just a minute. <laughs> we was talking to somebody. They, they was talking about going to school. I said, hey, I went to school in a one-room country schoolhouse back under on the hills of West Virginia. And I want you to know something today. That old teacher made you toe the mark. <laughs> hey, I, I found out a lot of things back then. But I want you to know something today. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. He's coming. I know today that people need to be ready. Amen. That old, old teacher, bless her heart, I can still remember her standing up in front of the class. And she had all eight grades in that one room schoolhouse. Two or three kids in a one. And she'd say, eighth grade reading, are you ready? <clears throat> I want you to know something today. And I want you to think about this. I'm going to give it all repetition for just a minute. <clears throat> Jesus is coming. Yes, he is. Amen. He's coming. Amen. It's a, not a probability, it's certainty. Amen. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Are you ready? That's a question I want you to answer for yourself. <laughs> Are you ready? You know, I, I, see, I see her here once in a while. I don't know if she's here today or not. I can't see her real well back in the back. But there, there's, there's a lady that comes here that I used to tell every time I'd see her. I'd say, Sir, well, you need to get in church. She walked up to me back there. I see a hand. <laughs> she walked up to me back there one one morning in the in the church aisle. She said, "You remember how you used to tell me that I always need to get in church?" I said, "Yeah." She said, "Well, I'm here." <laughs> Eric gave me a blessing this morning.
to say that he heard me preach when he was a little young boy. Still preaching the same message today that I preached back then. Jesus is coming. Yes. Boys will get an invitational song. Thank you. 